This is Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today we're discussing stem cell therapy for rheumatoid arthritis. Well, what exactly is it? Well, it's an autoimmune disorder, and it occurs when your own immune system mistakenly attacks your own body's tissues. So on the left here in the cartoon, you can see an area of the knee of normal cartilage with the meniscus. And on the right, you can see where the uh, joint is degenerative from the rheumatoid process. And basically what happens is your body attacks the synovial tissue, which then proceeds to break down the joint and the cartilage. So a few statistics, 60% of people with inadequately treated rheumatoid arthritis are unable to work a decade after onset. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis affects 1% of the population globally, some countries more. Factors that may increase your risk, women are affected more often than men, most common in middle age. Uh, certain lifestyle factors, smoking, obesity can increase the potential and then environmental exposures can increase your possibility for RA as well. RA increases the risk of heart attack and stroke uh, by a lot, 60% more one year after diagnosis. So there's a lot of secondary potential complications. Infections may be responsible for 25% of the deaths in people with rheumatoid arthritis, and people with RA are twice as likely to suffer from depression. One of the uh, things we'll talk about is that um, a lot of immunosuppressive medications are used in people with rheumatoid to help stop the body from fighting itself, and that can have its own set of issues, such as the infections. Annual medication costs, this comes from the United States, uh, it's fifteen to 20000 per patient per year, um, and the uh, um, other associated costs are almost close to $6,000. So as I mentioned, there can be some secondary complication. Here's some of them. Uh, potential for stroke, eye problems, lung issues, diabetes can be a result, sleep issues, depression, heart disease, vasculitis, and blood disease, as well as osteoporosis. And then, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it on here, but arthritis, obviously, of the joints. So conventional treatment options um, go by the main treatment goal is to control the inflammation, to relieve pain, and reduce the disability. The problem is that very few of these medications actually change the course of the disease. Uh, Nonsteroidal anti-inflammatories such as naproxen, um, ibuprofen, Celebrex, those can be very helpful. DMARDs uh, stands for disease-modifying agents, so they do change the course of the disease a little bit, such as methotrexate, Plaquenil, sulfazalazine. All of these have significant side effects. Methotrexate was originally approved in the United States, at least for a cancer drug. So all those are very toxic uh, to one's body. Uh, newer biologics, Humira, Enbrel, Remicade, and then good old steroids, such as prednisone. Surgeries that can help with pain relief may include joint replacement or a joint fusion. And then uh, occupational physical therapy may help too. Now, stem cell therapy for rheumatoid arthritis is truly a new paradigm uh, in, you know, something we haven't seen in decades. It's a non-operative treatment that can actually repair and regenerate damaged tissue, while at the same time providing relief and improving a person's ability to function. It's a low-risk treatment. It's outpatient. It's been very effective, uh, one of the most effective treatments that we offer around the world. And our protocol is usually what we call a hybrid, which is a combination of intravenous as well as focal injections. So how do the stem cell biologics work? Well, there's proposed four or maybe five mechanisms, the most prominent of which is called paracrine signaling. And all that means in layman's terms is cell-to-cell -cell communication, where the stem cells themselves recruit other cells in your body that help promote new blood flow, reduce uh, neuron and cartilage cell death, and other death of certain cells. Um, so it can be very, very effective. Now, as I just mentioned, new blood flow, neovascularization, 
Some people call it angiogenesis. However you want to phrase it, uh, new blood flow can help bring oxygen and nutrients to areas of damage. Immunomodulation, in the case of rheumatoid arthritis, is probably the most important aspect of what we're trying to accomplish. And what we can do is the stem cells uh, can help, and also the exosomes and cytokines, all the different elements of the regenerative biologic can help to modulate and mitigate the body from fighting itself. So it can uh, halt or significantly slow down the process of rheumatoid arthritis, mistakenly going after uh, the body, uh, such as in the joint, and it can really, really change the course of, of the disease. So I just want to go through a few studies to show you just how effective um, these treatments can be. Human umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cell therapy for patients with active rheumatoid arthritis. Um, in this study, it was 172 patients who had tried conservative therapies that just weren't working. And they had two groups, uh, the DMARDs, which I showed before, like methotrexate, plaquenil um, alone, or the DMARDs plus the umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells. And they gave 40 million cells at, at a time. Um, and they looked at serum markers of inflammation, like CRP and things like that. And they noticed that treatment induced a significant remission of the disease. Um, in those patients who had repeated infusions, they noticed better results. The DMARDs alone had really no benefit. So the conclusion, they noted that the treatment with the DMARDs plus the umbilical cord stem cells may provide safe, significant, and persistent clinical benefits for patients with active rheumatoid arthritis. Here's another study looking at IV infusion of umbilical cord blood-derived mesenchymal stem cells in RA. Um, and this was nine patients, so not a huge amount, who received anywhere from 25 to 100 million uh, stem cells and by uh, intravenous um, medium. There were no complications, and they noted that inflammatory markers were decreased significantly at a month. Um, here's another study, the efficacy and safety of umbilical cord stem cells for RA. This was 64 patients, large age ranges, um, and they got 20 million uh, stem cells, and they followed set rate, CRP, rheumatoid factor at one in three years after treatment, and they noted that at all time points, those were lower than that of pretreatment, which was significant. And the result of this study supported the use of umbilical cord stem cells as all these patients had failed traditional drug treatment and obtained symptomatic improvements as well as the you know, reduced markers of inflammation at three years out from treatment. So here's an example of a patient from that study who was experiencing significant swelling in both hands. Um, and in 2010, he was admitted for this study um, he couldn't keep his hands straight at that time. So after three years, so persisting with the great results, he had stopped using his anti-rheumatism medicine, and you see that the swelling was down. He was able to, to, I mean, this is the same patient, so amazing. Here's another one, a 33-year-old lady um, who'd had four years of symptoms, um, and this was one week after treatment. The swelling was down, able to uh, fully extend the fingers. All right, so one of the reasons that we use umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells um, is because of what you see here. Bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells and rheumatoid arthritis and other autoimmune diseases in this study noted that there could be problems when using those types of stem cells. Um, when they used autologous or allogeneic bone marrow, um, they noted that it's supposed to be a great treatment, but there was a small subset of patients who had an adverse um, effect that we have never seen in umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells. So the conclusion, and I just showed a few studies, there's many out there, um, and our experience as well, many small and medium studies, early clinical trials, and our own experience show that stem cell therapy for rheumatoid arthritis is not only safe, but very, very effective. And we're not talking about for a few weeks. As you saw in the studies, it's you know, one year up to three years, these studies looked at. The key point is that it appears that high stem cell numbers 
are necessary for the best outcomes. So we use anywhere from 20 million up to 100 million stem cells, you know, depending on the severity of, of the patient's disease. We've often seen a combo to work really well. For instance, if a patient has symptoms all over, but one of their knees or both knees are really, really symptomatic, then most likely they're going to benefit from an IV plus injection into the knees. Um, umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells um, is what we use, and they come from an FDA-regulated lab out of the United States. We've never had a significant adverse event ever in over 15,000 procedures. I do want to mention that um, we do not use embryonic stem cells or induced pluripotent stem cells. Those types of stem cells are not ready for prime time use by a long shot. There's a lot of research that still needs to occur, so you should run away if anyone suggests those types of stem cell treatment. What we use are adult stem cells. Um, they're classified that, but they do come from postnatal tissue from a consenting mother after a scheduled C-section. But at any rate, they are mesenchymal and hematopoietic stem cells, and those we've been using for a decade. Our international treatment program, we have a great center in the Islamabad, Rawalpindi area. We have more coming soon in Lahore and Karachi. The process is very simplified. Uh, con contact us, we'll set you up with a free phone consultation where one of our experienced stem cell doctors will talk to you, understand your symptoms, what treatments you've had, look at any medical records you have available. Um, we have several doctors, um, internists, orthopedic, um, kidney, liver, you know, all across the board. Uh, our patient concierge representatives will assist you with all your travel logistics if you're coming in from out of the country, including uh, travel from the airport to the clinic, hotel, you know, and back. I do want to mention once more about the cells. The cells come from a U.S. lab. It's FDA regulated, pristine safety record. The quality assurance abides by and goes above the stringent FDA standards. Um, they require a CGMP lab with clean room, um, tracking, um, very high levels of, of testing are necessary to assure against uh, any transmission of communicable diseases. We've never had that happen in over 15,000 procedures. Um, our umbilical cord stem cells do get cryo-preserved, and when we thaw them out, it has over a 90% viability. So if you're going to get 30 million stem cells, you know, there's actually 35 million or so in the biologic, uh, so you will get what we um, deem appropriate. And these are pure potent cells. Um, we do culture them. So we culture them and be very careful not to over culture so that they stay um, pure, potent, very active stem cells. Uh, R3, uh, I started the company eight, nine years ago. Uh, we recently won the USA's leading regenerative therapy services provider. We've won several other awards, uh, one of the 10 best companies of the year, 10 most innovative companies of the year. We've appeared on every major media channel that you can think of. Um, visit us today online at r3stemcell.com slash Pakistan. And you can call us on the USA prefix 001 at 888-988-0515. We'd love to help you out, set you up for that free consultation. Thank you.